welcome to what is the 20th Tale from the Story Cabin. Our story today involves King Solomon, who is famous for being wise. And the story is about how he might possibly have gained that wisdom in the first place. Now, Solomon appears as a character in many different sources. He's in Christian texts, he's in Islamic texts, he's in Jewish texts, and he turns up in stories like in this collection of Tales from the Arabian Nights. But our story today involves Solomon and a djinn. And just to be clear, this is djinn as in genie, spelt D-J-I-N-N, spirits of air and darkness, not djinn as in G-I-N, spirit that's popular down the pub. But before we get started, I'm going to need a story waistcoat. Bear with me a second. That's better. Solomon and the Jinn. Once it was, my friends, many moons ago that there lived a king called Solomon. Now, at the time of our story, he was still a young man, perhaps of just 20 summers. And although he was a good ruler, he had not yet gained that wisdom that was to make him so famous through the centuries. One of the things he did have that helped him with his ruling was a ring that sat on his left index finger. It was written around with words of power and it allowed him to control and command jinn, spirits of air and darkness. On the day of our story, Solomon awoke having had the strangest dream. In the dream, he had seen a fully formed temple carved from stone and marble. And he felt that he had been instructed to build this temple. But most strangely of all, he felt that he had been instructed to build this temple without using any conventional tools. It had to be built without the raising of a hammer or the striking of a chisel. Solomon summoned all of his greatest advisors and asked them how this might be achieved. And not one of them had an idea how you'd even begin to cut or dress stone if you weren't to use hammers and chisels and other tools. So Solomon felt he had no choice. He decided to summon a jinn. He used his ring and there appeared in a puff of smoke in front of his throne a great jinn, a spirit called Azirazel, who bowed low before him and introduced himself as a jinn of air, a jinn of darkness and a jinn, master of illusion. Solomon asked this spirit how one could cut and dress stone without using tools. And the spirit laughed and said it was simple. That from another place he could visit, he could bring a worm. And that worm, if you laid it upon the stone, would actually cleave it in two. And the face of the stone where it was cut would be as fine and as smooth as if it was done by the hammer and chisel of the greatest master stonemason. Solomon was about to dismiss him when he looked at the jinn and he said, you introduced yourself as a master of illusion. What does that mean? The jinn looked at him and said, well, the only way I can explain is to show you, but I cannot show you whilst you wear that ring upon your index finger. For not only does it give you the power to command me, but it protects you from my magic. Remove the ring and all shall be revealed, said the jinn. Solomon's counsellors gathered round him and all of them said to him, Don't do it. Do not do it, sire. It is certainly a trap. Well, of course it is a trap, said Solomon. I know it is a trap but I would dearly like to know. And before anyone could say another word, he took hold of the ring and lifted it off of his finger. The moment the ring cleared the top of his index finger, 
That djinn came down out of the air, grasped Solomon in one hand and threw him out straight through a window of his palace, high into the air. Solomon travelled many miles, far out past the borders of the lands that he ruled, out over a great ocean and fell down into that salty water. He coughed and spluttered, for landing had knocked all the wind out of his lungs. And when he reached the surface of the sea, he just lay there, floating, his arms and legs spread. He was so shocked and confused by what had happened that he lost all sense of time. He didn't know how long he floated on top of the sea. It might have been 30 minutes, or it might have been 30 hours, or it might have been 30 days. But at some point, a passing wooden ship under full sail threw out a net and drew him in. Now, I'm sorry to say this was not done with kind intent, for the ship belonged to slavers. And in bringing Solomon on board, what they saw was an opportunity to add to their cargo. Two days later, the ship docked at a great stone city. And Solomon and all the other slaves were taken to the marketplace and sold. Solomon worked for a rich merchant. He worked every day from sun up to sundown and he did so with good intent and good purpose and good humour. He was not paid and he had no freedoms. And every day that passed, Solomon forgot a little more about being king and learned a little more about being Solomon the slave. One day, his master, his owner, called him and said, Today's the tenth anniversary since I bought you at that marketplace, and you have worked unstintingly for the good of my household. So now I give you the gift of freedom and a little money so that you might make your own way in the world. Solomon went out into the city and after a few days he found himself a small one-room hut to live in and a job aboard a fishing boat. Every day he would rise early and go out on that fishing boat and work with the rest of the crew and they would haul in fish and bring them back to the marketplace and sell them and Solomon would receive a few coins. And each day he forgot a little more about being Solomon the king. And he learned a little more about being Solomon the fisherman. After 10 years, Solomon had saved enough money to buy his own fishing boat. And he hired his own crew. And each day he would get up even earlier than before to ensure that he and his crew were the first boat away so that they could get the best catch. For he felt the responsibility of all those who worked for him in his crew and making sure that they and their families had shelter over their heads and food to eat. And this could be done by catching fish and selling them at the marketplace. And each day, Solomon forgot a little more about Solomon the king and learned a little more about being Solomon, the captain, caring for his crew, sharing out his wealth from the catch more fairly than any other captain. Ten years went past, 30 years since Solomon had been flung from his palace. Ten years went past and one day one of the nets got tangled whilst out over the side of the ship. Solomon and all his crew managed eventually to pull it on board and to their amazement, there was a great blue fish almost as long as the boat. 
Solomon took his knife and ran it down the belly of the fish, ready to clean it. But when he looked inside, he found, almost as though it had been swallowed whole, a red fish, half the size of the blue fish. Solomon took it out and ran his knife down its belly, getting ready to clean it out. But when he looked inside the red fish, he saw inside it, as though it had been swallowed whole, a gold fish, half the size of the red. And this was not gold like the goldfish that we have in ponds or aquariums. This fish was gold and shone like the metal. Solomon took it out, took his knife and ran it down the belly of the fish, opened it up, ready to clean it. And inside, something glittered. Solomon took out a ring that stirred something in his memory, written about with words. And without even thinking about it, he took the ring and he put it on the index finger of his left hand. And the moment the tip of his finger passed into the ring, Solomon was standing back in his court. A young man of but 20 summers. Less than five seconds had passed since he had raised the ring from the end of his index finger. But in those five seconds, he had lived 30 years. He settled the ring back onto his index finger. And the djinn bowed low and said, that is what it means to be a master of illusion. And then with a twist in the air, was gone. And so it was that Solomon went on to rule as the wisest of kings, a man of but 20 summers, but with the experience of a man much older than he, a man who had spent time as a slave, spent time as a fisherman and spent time as a captain of a boat who understood the needs and the wants of those he ruled and the things that they suffered. The wisest, in fact, of all kings. And that is why, even to this day, if we meet somebody who is wise, we might say of them that they have the wisdom of Solomon. And that, my friends, is the story of Solomon the Jinn. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please have a look on the YouTube channel. There are more stories. Well, actually 19 more stories on there. Or follow Storybeard on Facebook and I'll put up details of new stories whenever I record them. Until I see you again here in the Story Cabin. Take care, my friends. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.